Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about DWM. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that I've come to highly enjoy DWM. I used to be a big i3 guy, now I've pretty much moved to DWM full time. And I'm sure that eventually something else will catch my fancy and I'll move on to a different window manager. I'm just kind of like that. My attention span is not that big. <laughs> so, um... But one of the things you'll learn about DWM if you decide you're going to, you know, use it for very often is that the way it comes out of the box, so to speak, is um, pretty much unusable. I mean, it, you, it, there's so many things that it just it can do. Uh, so many annoyances that you have to deal with without, you know, actually putting in some work. So the way DWM and the suckless people solve this is through the patching system. Now I'm not going to do a video on how to patch. There's are, there are dozens of those out there. Um, so just Google how to patch DWM. It's pretty easy. Um, it was very daunting for me the first time because I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I think that's the way it is for everybody. Just Google, Google that or YouTube that and, uh, you'll be able to find a, a you know, a pretty good tutorial. I know, uh, Hex DSL has done a good one. Mental Outlaw has done a good one. Uh, so just check out those channels. So what I'm going to do today, though, is talk about a few of my favorite patches. Now, I've listed this as my top five DWM patches, but I probably will talk about a few more than five. Uh, but just roundabouts. So let's uh, let's jump over to a browser, shall we? Uh, let's see here. All right, I really need to get that changing of a scene to a key binding. I'm sure there is one. So the first one I'm going to talk about one is called Always Center. Now, this is um, it's it's a weird one, like because you it's not really something that you'd think about. So when you spawn a window that is floating, so let's just say a scratch pad like this, uh, if you didn't have this patch, it would appear up here in the upper left hand corner. That's annoying AF. So this is especially something to do like um, Steam. If you use Steam on DWM. A lot of times it'll have like a pop-up for like a sale or something like that. That's considered a pop-up sometimes, or maybe it's a login or the, the update dialog thing. That will actually spawn an upper left-hand corner if you don't have always centered uh, patched in. So it's very simple. It's only a couple lines. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's only like two lines of code. Um, these, are, these are the two lines of code that it adds, it adds to dwm.c. That's, I mean, it's very simple code, um, very easy to install, very unlikely to fail if you patch, even if you've patched many times before. So that is always centers. One of the ones that I, I've used the three or four times now I've installed DWM. The next one is attach bottom. This one will, all right, so by default, I can't show you this because I have this patch installed. By default, any new windows you spawn are spawned over here. And this one on this side on the left hand side that's annoying so if you keep, you keep spawning and your oldest window would be down here at the bottom that's not the way things should work and I think that the, I mean but oops oh man <laughs> now you got to be careful what you close we're gonna have to reopen those um, so uh, anyways that's not the way it should work, so I'm going to have to go get my list of patches again. So the the next one I want to talk about is Auto Start. Uh, this is very uh, self... I mean, it's right in the name, it's Auto Start. Without this patch, DWM, DWM can't Auto Start. Anything, it doesn't have an Auto Start file. You'd have to run all of your Auto Start programs or whatever, like Nitrogen or SXHKD or... Um, you know, poly bar. If you're using a different, you know, any bar, the any bar patch, any of those things, you'd have to run that through Xnet RC or something similar like that. With the auto start patch, it allows you to create a auto start script that will start all those things like Compton or Pycom, as it is known not known now. And stuff. Every time you start DWM, is is again, it's something that is built into every other uh. Window Manager that I know of, even Xmonad, which is considered just as suckless as DWM, uh, has that built in. All right, so the next one, uh, Cycle Layouts, isn't one that you really need unless you have a whole bunch of layouts that you have installed, and I do for some really stupid reason. So I'm just gonna ignore that. Uh, Move Stack is another one. 
So let's say you have a couple windows and uh, let's open up H top on this. Let's say I want to move this up in the stack. So I'd have to, pr by default, you can't do that. <laughs> There's no mechanism for moving windows on the screen at all. Uh, well, that's not true. You can make them, uh, you can change the width of the master and stack layout. That's it. You can't move one, them up or down. So if, you, but with this patch, you can move it with a key binding to different places, and that's how you do it. Um, so let me close these. Um, that's ma that's the move stack patch. Um, so I've covered now one, two, three, four. So there's a couple more. Like I said, I was going to cover more than five anyways. I don't know why I called this a top five video. Um, all right. So per tag is another thing that is solves a problem that DWM for some reason creates on its own. Every other window manager out there, the window spit, the workspaces act as workspaces and each one can have its own separate layout of windows. By default on DWM, if say you have multiple windows and they're laid out like this, okay, if you change to a different tag, like you know, tag four, you open up, you know, windows and they'd automatically be in the exact same layout. Um, you in you can't change it. If you change it on four, it would automatically be changed on three. Change it on three, it would automatically be changed on four. So if you say you you made you know, made it look like this, you'd go you'd change it to to your tag three, and this would be changed just like you change it on tag four. I don't think I really explained that all, all that well, but what per tag does is allows each tag to have independent. Um, uh, layouts so sizing of windows can be independent per tag uh, and so on uh, it's another thing that DWM really should do out of the box because why would you want all of your windows on every tag to have the exact same size that takes away flexibility I mean it's really uh, I don't think uh, let's see DWM per tag this adds quite a few lines actually a lot more than I actually thought it did yeah, this adds quite a few ta They claim to be suckless, but really this 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 um that tag shouldn't be so long. Anyways, so another one I'm going to talk about is one that is not necessary for everybody. But I well, I, mean, I think it is necessary for everybody, but it's not necessary for use of DWM like all the rest of them are. I I I covered this in a video not too long ago. I will link to it in the description below and probably up in the one of the corners here um this the scratch pads thing this is a scratch pad and this is just my my music player and you can have any like terminal application you know in there and it's awesome it's changed the way i've used linux it's really i mean it's just cool um it, it's basically a workspace or a, a terminal that exists on a workspace that is invisible so you don't have to have you know that program taking up space on a workspace or a tag all right um Really, the last one I want. To, there, there's two more. One st status all mons is really simple. It just if you have multiple monitors, uh, it means that your status bar will show up on all of your monitors. Again, something that you probably should have out of the box. Um, although I can see that I can see that one at least because not everybody has multiple monitors, so at least that kind of makes sense. Uh, same thing with warp. Warp is another one that is best suited for if you have multiple monitors um, but it also is good if you have multiple uh, you know if you have multiple windows open so basically what warp does is when you change the focus of a monitor so I'm on my other one you'll notice that the cursor left my cursor now is on the other monitor in the center that way if I change the focus you know to another monitor I don't have to hunt for the the cursor which is on another screen it automatically comes back see how it comes back comes back that's what warp does very simple uh, I, again I think that's just a couple lines of code so those are my my favorite uh, patches I will say this let's uh go back to the big screen here and I'm gonna I'll probably make a video on this later on after I've played around with ST a little bit more but my opinion is that suckless software is pretty much useless without patches there are certain patches that you just have to have in order to make suckless software, specifically DWM in this case, uh, worthwhile or um, 
you know, pleasant to use. And that's, and it's kind of like having a, a car where, yeah, technically you could drive it, but it, it comes with stools instead of seats in the, you know, and it has, you know, the, the steering wheel's like kind of square, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just kind of weird. And you have to kind of go through and add extras to it in order to make it actually pleasant to use. So, uh, the uh, ob other end of this is that you really do have to be careful with how you patch DWM because the more patches you have, the more likely things are going to break. So I'm right now at the point where I think I'm probably at the max number of patches that you should have. I have, uh, let's see, that's uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I have 11 patches. Um, and you'll especially want to make sure that you don't switch between things. So this is actually my second build of DWM on this computer. I started out with DWM blocks, which is the stuff that provides the stuff for the status bar. And that worked out fine, but then I switched to SL status. And because I didn't go through and un take out all the code that DWM blocks added to DWM, DWM, my SL status actually ended up failing after I added a couple of patches. So you really have to kind of be careful of your patching history and know what's been added, what hasn't been added. And when you take something out, you have to make sure you get everything of that patch out of your code. Um, so it can get pretty complicated the more patches you have. The best thing to do is just to add the ones that you absolutely have to have, the ones that you know will work. All right, so that is it for this video. Uh, I know it was kind of a rambly, ranty kind of video. All my videos are like that. Uh, I don't make notes because... <clears throat> completely too lazy to do so <laughs> i actually did have all the browser tabs open but i closed them because i'm a dumb person <laughs> if you want to support the, this dumb person you can do so by subscribing or hitting the like button or you know what do us a favor and do both we really do appreciate that thank you for watching we'll see you next time